I want to talk about my highly cynical model of human nature. Uh, unfortunately, I have become tainted by many years of working and helping the police with their inquiries, mostly on a professional basis, um, but dealing with you know, murderers, kidnappers and all the sort of stuff like that makes you a little bit cynical about human nature. But there is a serious point, because many of these things are actually surprisingly true for a vast number of people. First thing is, we're all bombarded by information. So what do you pay attention to? We all set up filters related to things that interest us, and we notice the things that we're interested in. Again, more evidence to say you've got to get into the other person's mind and see the world from their viewpoint. We are very selective in what we pay attention to. Now, this third statement screws people up big time. Minds are simplistically complex. What do we mean by that? Well, the average human brain of even the dullest individual has more neural interconnections than there are trees in the Amazonian rainforest. And that's quite a lot. However, human beings frequently operate on fairly predictable patterns of behavior. So although we've got this gigantically complex computer, actually people are surprisingly predictable. And that's why I really push the point about listening to the language that people use. It gives you a clue to what's going on in their mind, which gives you a clue as to the way they are likely to behave, the things they're likely to do. And this is particularly important when it comes to selling ideas or selling products or whatever. So although we're very complex, we actually got a number of very basic patterns that we actually use. Even the hardest individual is surprisingly sensitive once you get through the shell. Uh, and over the years of training military interrogators, we've had techniques of actually getting people to talk. And now they don't involve electrodes, that's all a bit of a myth. But uh, we, we get them to make the decision to discuss things and talk things. Because once you get to the sensitivities, everybody is prepared to open up. Most people are unsure. There's a lower level of confidence in the average human being than we see from the outside. People often are very much more insecure. And when I do the psychotherapy work, I find that even quite hard and tough CEOs, uh, actually, when you actually pull the shell away and get them quietly on their own without any peer pressure, uh, it's surprising how un insecure they are. And we're stubborn. We make our mind up, and we don't like to change it. So this is the ballpark of what we're dealing with the human mind. And it manifests itself in a number of ways. First way it manifests itself is in what I call the world's most favorite radio station, WIIFM, What's In It For Me. And uh, people are most interested in themselves. Be honest about it. Actually, they are the focal of attention themselves and their families. So again, relevant to your business. Everybody has a craving to feel important. Dale Carnegie picked that up in the 1930s. And we are skeptical when something is going to benefit the person who's trying to get us to do something. So if you're trying to sell an idea that benefits you, the other side is inherently a bit skeptical about the motivation. I certainly am. If someone decides to sell me something, first thing I'm interested to know is what their commission is and why are they selling me this particular thing. Somebody with a budget wants to get the best out of their budget, and that's what I mean by the greed factor. That's true in public sector as well as private sector. People want the best bang for the buck that they can get. People want to feel they belong. And that's why events such as this are so important, particularly when you run a smallish business and you feel often very isolated. The feeling of being part of something is very, very powerful.